this is John with Brainstorm Comics and Gaming, and this is this week's Turning the Page. So our first topic this week, Chris, is uh, what you come in on Tuesdays to sometimes help me set up the wall and everything. And one of the recent things that I've been complaining about, and this is why you don't complain about things, is how many books have been on the DC side of the wall for for the last two or three weeks. I watched you Rubik's Cube that wall for like 20 <laughs> minutes the other day. It was great. And apparently I'm not going to have that problem in a couple weeks because DC is not going to be able to ship 20-some books. It was a bunch, yeah. Um, apparently the... There are, I mean, well, clearly there are several ports that are closed around the around COVID. the globe. Mm-hmm. Um, one of China's biggest ports, I don't know whether that was one of the problems with this, but one of their biggest ports uh, closed last week. I mean, I'm sure. It was, it, a lot of it was ports, and then there are apparently... Shortages. On... Paper shortages, and there's paper rationing, I guess, because there's a limited amount of paper. We are about this close from living in Mad Max. I mean, sure. <laughs> Okay, sure. maybe not quite that bad. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just inconvenience, I guess. Maybe. That's what I'm saying. Mad Max it was was, was inconvenient. I mean, Mad Max was very <laughs> inconvenient. I feel like on many levels, yeah. Um, but this is why you don't complain, though, because like I said, like was it like I think it was like 24, 25. Sure, sure, sure. But I just want people not to worry because DC puts out seventy five <laughs> books every week anyway, so there'll still be plenty of DC books for you to read. That was, like I said, it's a. Uh, did they say what, what it was spread over? Was it like the entire it month? Like it, was it was mostly Batman, and I think it was over the entire month. Okay. But don't worry, there's 75 Bat books coming out, so it's cool. Well, the other thing, though, is, so, if let's say 25. Let's say it's 25 books. Something like that. DC puts out two to three covers for every book, so that still takes up a large Not amount. Not counting of, variants, like incentive <laughs> variants, yes. That takes up a, 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 B, and a card stock for most of them, yes. Yeah, so that that's like a large portion of the wall there. I, I know that's part of my... It's my problem that I order the variants, but some of the variants are... Some of them are good, yeah, yeah. Um, I think that uh, any any notions we had of, like, COVID being a thing of the past at this point are shattered. Yeah. Um, COVID's still a very real thing. It's affecting the world uh, in many different ways. So the interesting thing about this is DC left Diamond because mm-hmm. they did not ship books for about two and a half months um, during mm-hmm. last year. And I, I feel still, like that was a lot of just like we're going to use that as an excuse to leave Diamond. Um, well, apparent, well, there were two reasons. Diamond was also not paying them, and they said they weren't going to pay them until like books resumed. I feel like we could do a whole episode on the crazy monopoly that Diamond has over the comic book industry. It has had for many years. I will tell you, I like Diamond more than I liked the two people that the DC has replaced them. Sure, with. I mean they're they're a giant company, but I, I guarantee you that every person who's ever owned a comic book shop ever has horror stories of Diamond. Yeah. Um, and but they ship so many units. Uh, I, I don't know. And it's also, I mean, there's going to be issues, but I, I think the way that Diamond handled it in the past was very much. Oh, don't like, get me wrong. I definitely have problems with Diamond. Uh, the, the, like, where I, where I else you going to go, buddy? Like you know I, what I mean? They didn't care. So, so there was a second print of a book that had a 1 in 25 variant and I ordered 25 copies to get the 1 in 25 variant and the 20, 1 in 25 variant was damaged and I reported it and they gave me a credit for it and I was like well I wouldn't have taken the other 25 right, right. <laughs> copies. Uh, same thing with, with Diamond just uh, accidentally putting all those incentive variants in the Walmart packs and stuff uh, that have been happening so um, I mean Diamond's not the, the tiny innocent puppy no, in the world that they want but, you to think But my are. thing is that so so far we haven't heard anything about like any of the independent books or Marvel books having the nope. same sort of problem nope. that um, Lunar is having apparently with Diamond getting or with DC getting the stuff to them. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know whether they're using different printers, different whatever. Than... I think I think you're but you're you're dealing with like um, the equivalent of like uh, you know like a mom and pop restaurant and McDonald's. You know what I mean? Like Diamond has the resources. Diamond has the manpower, uh, so they're gonna make sure they get what they need. Where Luna, pro- and it's probably not on that scale, but I, I would assume that Luna doesn't have as much resources as Diamond has. So it unfortunately is going to affect the comic community, which didn't get affected so bad by shortages and stuff like that. I mean, I know there was a period, but as far as other things are concerned, it wasn't as bad. No, apparently DC's biggest issue. Their biggest problem is that it's going to affect Batman Day. That the Batman Day books are going to be yes delayed. First, apparently for a lot of stores, it doesn't say that. It seemed like also that it wasn't totally 
not going to ship. It seemed like no. It seemed like there was a couple titles or a couple variants or something like that. They they weren't very clear in the article of like what exactly wasn't coming. Yeah. But it seemed like there was a few things that weren't going to make it. And DC has pumped up Batman Day for several years at this point. So this is a big. I mean, thing for let's them. be honest. DC is all in on Batman. I mean, if you think <laughs> if you think any other way, then you're half you're their mistaken. books in November. I think probably or? more than half. I mean, Fear State is gigantic at this point. Um. Just the the way Batman is being done right now is is on a huge huge scale, and I think a lot of that has to do with Tinian. So we'll see what that does after Tinian leaves. Um, but I mean, I think it's silly to feel like or think that in some way, shape, or form that things weren't going to be affected somehow from COVID in this. And I think that you just kind of we just need to have patience yeah. and, and just well, as comic guys like our, and gals like our stuff on Wednesday. That's the <laughs> <laughs> we are creatures of habit. We now. What are you talking? Comic book fans are anything but flexible and understanding. <laughs> well, like I said, we're creatures of habit. Like we, a lot of us have OCD. Like we need, if we have a hole in our collection. Yep. Like it, it drives us crazy, yep. and we need to hunt that book down. Mm-hmm. Like it's the last unicorn. Yep. Um, <laughs> but, um, but I don't know. I. I hope that the, they, they resolve the issues and that they, sure, they can sure. get it all. I mean, there's also the argument to be made for, well, maybe if they didn't leave Diamond, then this wouldn't have happened. I, I still hope that they go back to Diamond at some point. Like I said, I think Diamond needs them. Um, I, I think it's more and more proving that Diamond or DC needs them as well. Um, from my understanding, I think they're still using Diamond for their European distribution. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I mean, the young punk rock kid and me won't let me like diamond they're, they're the man of the comic book world so i'm gonna think when to... random house is such a small scale uh, i mean operation. listen we got to pick our battles when we can, <laughs> you know so um like i said we'll see how it affects the uh, well the other question is like how it's going to affect fear state and everything like whether, whether the reading it didn't seem like it was or... it was it was going to affect fear state it, a big chunk of it seemed like it was going to be batman day and then that one kind of I thought it was more than that. And if there's a first appearance, the the, the orders get messed up because of the... That's what I'm saying. The Chaos. <laughs> I love it. Like, I ordered 100 copies of this one because it was supposed to be the first appearance. And it'll be what? Punchline all over again. Uh, it'll be, what was it, Red Goblin all over again, too. And uh, Virus. Well, all of Free them. Free comic book day. Gosh, and then the... all of them, man. <laughs> It's so wild how well, the, the well, industry as a whole, we just get together and take a vote on like what first appearances are going to be. 180 or 181? No, we want 181. So we'll turn the topic on that and we'll revisit it as we start seeing the fallout from the delay in shipping. And let's move on to topic number four. Actually, before we do that, I forgot to do this at the beginning. Don't forget to LCS. Like, comment, and subscribe to your local comic book shop, LCS, Bracer Comics and Gaming, in Frederick, Maryland, and Walkersville, Maryland. Do it. If you are looking for a day trip, you want to go visit uh, a record store. I know Chris has a favorite down there. Sure, record exchange. Um, the restaurants, the bars, the breweries, the um, pop stores. culture stores, candy stores, pop shop. There's rock a, shops. Rock shop. <laughs> Anything you want, you can find downtown. Mm-hmm. Great day day trip. You can find mm-hmm. walk along the creek. Uh, you can walk the creek, yeah. So. Um, or if you're looking for more back issues, you want to fill those holes because you have a, a you're missing a book and it is driving you crazy because you're your OCD. <laughs> come to walk. I used like I used to get really annoyed when I was missing missing books and it uh, bugs me too. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, it bugs me too. <laughs> well, I I forgot. Well, I'll have to ask you later. I know you're looking for all the Jenny Frizen, so always. Um, if you guys know of a Jenny Frizen book that he may not know of, let him know. He uh, he is on the hunt. I'm always on the hunt for those Frizen covers. Um, and but if you're looking for more back issues, mm-hmm. we have about a hundred thousand comics in the Walkersville location. If there are any Frizens left? I found them all here. Did you get the Catwoman ones? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Just making sure. It's hey, I mean, I might have missed one or two, okay. so. Um, but we have have a hundred thousand or so back issues. There's a lot. Uh, people are finding us more and more, so mm-hmm. it's good. But let's turn to topic number four. I think we're up to back to um, business. Yep. So you had mentioned James Tinian leaving Batman. He's the new back. writer on on Batman mm-hmm. immediately restored faith in me because I love Joshua Williamson. I don't feel like he gets the credit that he deserves. Nailbiter, phenomenal title. Nailbiter was great. Yeah. Um, 
the I know you, I keep telling you ghosted, and then you keep yelling at me because you're like, well, where is it? <laughs> Can't tell me about the book and then not have it. <laughs> also, I'm reading so much stuff right now. It's probably a good thing because it's hard to divide my attention. Ghosted is amazing though. Ghosted. Um, Josh Williams also done a great job on Infinite Frontier. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think he's going to do an excellent job on mm-hmm. on being a replacement for for Tenyon. Um, it's big shoes to fill. It is. It big, is big shoes to fill. Um, but much like Tenyon. Williamson has a darker side to mm-hmm. his to his mm-hmm. writing. Um, sure. I think he loves the DC universe. No offense to Tinian, I don't feel like he has that same love of the universe as as he does. I'm getting um, like really like worked. Out. Like I don't know. Like I feel like you're, you're like just talking bad about my homie right now. I'm, I'm, <laughs> like I got to defend him, but I, I don't. It's you know. I mean, there's just certain. Writers that I think have more of a connection with. Sure. I also think that this kind of came at a very inconvenient, this whole Substack him leaving thing came at a very inconvenient time. Um, and DC, if you want to learn about the Substack thing, watch the other turning the page. Because we talk about it the entire time. There's no other <laughs> topics. It's just us rambling about Substack. Um, uh, they, they, I think what, 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 from what I read and what I understood was DC gave him, they, they called it like the Hickman kind of like, uh, outlook on Batman where he was going to reshape the entire universe all of the Bat books it was all going to be like he was going to be X-Men like House of X style Um, and I just think that he didn't get a chance to kind of realize that because he left Um, so it's going to be interesting to see what direction this kind of goes in now I'm not talking about that I'm talking about like the connection of the writer to the to the to the characters I feel like Joshua Williamson has a very deep deep connection to I almost feel like Jeff Johns type of connect like Jeff Johns loved the characters I don't think he always made the right decisions about the characters I think that Tinian's just showing his love and appreciation in different ways and trying to be new and different about it um I mean that Joker title is Oh, that, I love that Joker title. Um, I think a lot of what he does on Batman I will say is... A lot, I was going to say, a lot of the Batman readers are not as as fond of that one right now. But. I mean, that's cool. They can be wrong. That's fine. <laughs> um, no, I, I, I think I think he's taking kind of newer and different approaches to the Batman character um, that are just a little different than has been done before. And, I mean, in all honesty, like... What else can we do with Batman? You know what I mean. Like, well, let me get clear. I'm I'm not reading Batman. I I depend on like the, the people who are picking it up sure, to tell sure. me. Like, um, I'm not reading all the bad books because that's like a full time job. I feel like honestly, uh, I'm reading a bunch of them though. Um, but we know my feelings towards Batman. So. We all know. I mean, you know my feelings <laughs> towards Batman too. Um, maybe we'll talk about it on the internet one day. Um, <laughs> But yeah, no, I, I, I think it, I think like like we talked about before in in the last episode, I think that there is going to be a very large power vacuum creator wise in in the uh, in the comic industry coming up soon, and it's going to be kind of exciting to see who picks up those torches and who moves forward with this. I think this is a good announcement. I I, I wasn't bummed about it. Um, well, he's the architect of the DCU right now. Like yeah, he's uh, laying yeah. the foundation for everything. Sure. Yeah. So. Um, I hope that this propels Joshua Williams into like that superstar status. Mm-hmm. Again, I feel like he's just outside of that. Yeah, I feel like because honestly, like when when I read that first, I was like, who? And then I looked a little bit and was like, oh, okay, like, but it's not. It's he's not a household name yet. He's not that name that you read. Nailbiter is awesome. I mean, I'm not you. <laughs> Nailbiter is great. Yeah, read Nailbiter. <laughs> totally. Um, so like I said, I, I think it's in good hands though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't have any concerns. I, it wasn't like it's like the Hulk situation where I was like, oh man. Um, yeah, I, I, I feel like, uh, I feel like it's in good hands, and I feel like it, you know, it'll continue to be. I mean, really, at this point, how do you mess Batman up though? He's Batman. He does Batman things? You can't mess him up any more than what he already is. I mean, really, in all honesty. That's why yeah. you need somebody who's straight and a straight shooter like Jason Todd to tell him what's going on. <laughs> no comment to that. Okay, so. <laughs> We'll turn the page. We on don't it. have time in the episode. We can't. We can't. We can't get into that back and forth right now. That's a whole episode in of itself. We'll turn the page on that topic for right now. <laughs> let's, let's get, yeah. uh, but before we like get in said, trouble, we, we hope that J- Joshua Williamson does a great job on that. I yeah, think, I think he's going to be a great follow up. Yeah, to, I think it'll be good. Um, we will do one more topic because let's all these topics more. seem to be leading into the next one. Let's so do one more. Uh, the next and um, maybe last, we'll see whether this one leads into another one. Uh, you talked about all the Batman books. One of the biggest Batman books in the last. Year is probably Batman Urban Legends number six, which is blown up on eBay, blown up on social media, blown up on in the media. And so we'll talk about the one that 
there's two stories in it that I think were very big. We'll talk about the one that did the social media and media blow up and eBay that like, really caused the eBay blow up. Mm. And then we'll talk about the one that makes me angry. So, <laughs> okay. It's fine. Do you want to do them in that order? Yes. Okay. We'll do them okay. in that order. All right. You want so, to do angry last? To, okay. Yeah, we'll do angry last. Okay. Cool. Like, uh, cool. We'll end it on a good note. Well, maybe we'll do one more topic. So. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Tim Drake. Mm -hmm. um, said that he's interested in dating his best friend or one of his friends. I think so. Um, coming out as bisexual. Uh -huh. um, now, I'm not going to lie. I have not read these either one of the stories that we're getting ready to talk about. I'm going off of articles that, mm -hmm. that, that I've read. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, will, I, I always try and not claim that I've read something that I, that I have not read. So, um I have read some things that said like, this has kind of been him and that for for some time. I've never been a huge Batman fan. To yeah, it was uh, yeah, and I think the, the the way they did it in the book was very like they were trying to be slick about it, but they were being like very on the nose, um, which I think made a lot of people angry. Did you end up reading it? Uh, no, you haven't read it. I haven't read it. Okay. Um, I've read enough about it. I've seen the. Oh, okay. You said you don't want to open your copy. I want to open my copies. I want to, you know, I want a nine eight if it's going to be like that. Um, and to be fair, I didn't just pick that. Like I'm on Urban Legends. Like that's a, a book I pull monthly. Um, yeah, I mean, I have I have all kinds of feelings about this. Um, and and a, a big thing for me is um, representation is so important mm -hmm. in today's world. Um, you made that clear in several videos. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I feel like I am all for making characters have any sexual preference they want. I think we try to make them human in so many other aspects of their existence that to think that there aren't going to be trans or, or homosexual folks in the comic world at large is silly and, and, and antiquated thinking, and it's dumb. Um, <clears throat> I just worry about this becoming a cash grab and making something that's so important to the world as a whole just into a spectacle. Uh, that's my concern with it. Um, other than that, him being bisexual affects my feelings for the character none. So I feel like it did come a little bit out of left field. I, I need to go back and read the things that they were talking about in terms of having it been set up mm -hmm. already in the past. Um, one of the things that I'm concerned about and if you're a customer watching this and you think I'm targeting you, I'm not. Like I, I'm saying that several people have mentioned this to me, like during the during, afterwards. Um, they said that Tim Drake wasn't very interesting and he needed something as a hook. And to me, that's a terrible reason to to make. If that's the reason they did it, I don't think that he's not. Ter I mean, there are way less interesting. I don't think that's good storytelling. If that's yeah, the, no, I feel like there are there are way more minor players that if that's the if that's the route they wanted to to have gone, they could have gone that route very easily. Um, Plus, he's the more science based one out of all the Robins, right? Sure. Like, yeah. I I thought that was more like his differentiating. Mm -hmm. Like, and that's kind of the way I felt about it too. Um, I mean, and, and, you know, like my big reaction to the whole thing was really, who cares? And the reason I was prefacing you know I mean? that is I, I don't want them to think like right. I, I'm yeah. like. <laughs> I mean, at, at this point, like I said, at this point, a character being gay or bisexual or trans or poly, whatever they want to be, um, it really, why does it really matter? You know, and, and I think that, I think that's the issue that concerns me personally the most is like, why does this still matter? Like, why is this still a thing? Like, why does this have to be some big event? Like, why does this, like, why, why can't it just be? Because it is, it is in the world. It's an everyday world. We live in a world where you know homosexual people, you know trans people, whether you know it or not, or whether you acknowledge it or not. They are humans. They 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 live among us for a terrible term, but uh, like it's it's a thing, and it shouldn't be made into an event or like a big deal because it's it's not. It's it is, but it's not. So it, you know what I mean? Like I don't know thing. if I'm coming across the way I should, but so here's the thing. For this one in particular. I think it's bogus media attention in terms of they reporting it as Robin comes out as bi. And yeah, the thing about that is Joe Blow off the street thinks Dick Grayson. like they, He's probably still thinks there's only one Robin and not five or six of them or whatever there is at this point. Exactly. Because there wasn't this, this kind of media attention for uh, Crush. 
um, Batwoman. There, Batwoman. There wasn't this well, kind maybe of maybe a little bit of Batwoman. I, I can, maybe a little a, bit, but I feel like even I mean there was during during Pride Month, you know, there were there was all kinds of, of stuff that they did Pride covers, they did special variants, they did all kinds of stuff. It didn't get anywhere near the media coverage as the one little blurb of Robin is is bisexual. Yeah. And like I said, I think I think it is because the, Joe Blow is like, "What do you mean?" And, they and think, even in like the grand scheme of Robins, in like the the hierarchy of Robins, he's not that far up on that. You know what I mean? It's like it it, it just it, it just seemed to me like it was it was a media grab. It was a, it was a cash grab. It was it was something to bring attention to it, which which I well, don't like I said, I think there's subterfuge involved also because like I said, when you say let's say Robin, Joe Public thinks of a, a specific mm-hmm. Robin. They don't sure. think of. Tim Drake, who, who, like I said, very few people who don't read comics would right. even know. Exactly. So, like I said, to me, I, I have a problem with people if 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 that is the reason why they made him bisexual is to just make him interesting, and I right. have a problem with the media um, right. right up as, of trying to confuse people and get them angry. So you're saying that we actually agree on something for once? Is that so? I'd like to change my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> We can never agree on anything. Is that I don't know how we're friends sometimes. So, <laughs> so but we'll move on to the second story okay. in that book, and this is the one that that made me angry. You were big mad. I am big like, mad. I came in that day, and you were just mad at the world, <laughs> just mad at the world. So, but I also told you that it makes me wonder whether Urban Legends is outside of continuity. I, I, I because it, it's kind of a, uh, it's like an anthology book anyway. I don't think that it is. I, th- I think they're kind of picking and choosing what's canon it, it, at this point. Well, DC says everything is canon at this point, but it depends on which world and blah, blah, blah. And, There's um, infinite worlds and infinite dimensions and... Infinite Robins of all multi- infinite multiverse sexualities. shenanigans, <laughs> yep. But Red Hood has been probably my favorite Batman character over the last five, six years. Mm-hmm. Um, I did not read Scott Lobdell's first um, Red Hood and Outlaw series. I've heard it was terrible. Um, that's what people have told me. I don't know. The one with Artemis and Bizarro? No, that's the second one. Okay. So right. the first one was with Starfire and Roy Harper. Arsenal. Yeah, that one was kind of trash. Um, <laughs> so. I didn't think that was the first one, but yeah, that was kind of trash. Um, apparently that one, like I said, people did not like. I did not read that one, but I did read the second one. And it may be a little, well, maybe the first one's good, but you super all are making good. me. <laughs> the second one is super good. And it made me love Jason Todd. Like yeah. Jason, Jason Todd was like, you know what? Screw Batman, you know, I'm going to make my own family, his own, own unholy trinity. He um, did, he did. And t- brought a whole new dimension to Bizarro. It, that was a great, and Artemis. great, and Artemis. It was a great run. That was a super good book. I think it was a missed opportunity on that book. But. I think it, I think that book should have been way bigger than it was. Um, God, are we agreeing on something else? <laughs> Man, it's like a banner day here on Turn the Page. Maybe we are ending on positive, even though I'm Maybe about to start are. yelling. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, when Chip Zdarsky was, was mm-hmm. mentioned to be writing this, I, I had high hopes for it because mm-hmm. he is a rising star. I know you like mm-hmm. to say he's already there. But. I mean, rising, you know, his star is risen, son. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, that was fun. So, oh. um, <laughs> Batman Three Jokers, I told you, was mm-hmm. one of my favorite Batman stories yeah. of the last five years. Super, up there with White super Knight. Super good, super duper um, good. So you're one. Yeah. It's, it's in my eyes, it's one of the great Batman stories. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Sure. I think the first two thirds of it were better than the last third. Yeah. But, um, agree. 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 Jo- uh, again, Jason Todd came out on top in that one, blasting Batman, telling mm-hmm. him he's a terrible person and his, his methods are the ones that are, are wrong. Mm-hmm. And with conviction that mm-hmm. very few characters in the DCU mm-hmm. attack, uh, attack Bruce with, I think the words weaponized his guilt. <laughs> were used <laughs> and my jaw dropped yeah yeah he gave it to batman in that book yeah. and then like i said i have not read this I, i'm gonna have to i will read the story just to make sure i'm not like going just bashing it to bash it yes um okay. but according to the articles i read your knee-jerk reaction was anger it is it still is it still is does it keep you up at night <laughs> it does okay so i only got three hours sleep last okay. night so oh, this keeps you up at night, but not all the terrible things that we've done to him as a whole to now. Like, he's totally been, like, the Bat family's, like, whipping boy forever, and you're okay with all that. He is the best Batman character. Like, I mean... <laughs> don't deny it. Don't deny it. No, I can't. No, I can't. We're, we're going to have to part ways. He's not the best. Who's the best one? Nightwing? You can go with Nightwing because of Tom Taylor? Come on, man. And Nightwing. Bitewing? Nightwing. 
hundred percent. Did Dick Grayson ever yell at uh, Bruce for 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 using his children for? Because Dick Grayson's no, we, we're digressing. Let's let's go. Let's let, let's let's we're because we're gonna we're gonna go down a rabbit hole here, and then we're gonna start arguing again, and then. So according to the articles I read, um, Jason Todd is trying to make amends with Bruce mm-hmm. and giving up guns, mm-hmm. um, and I would assume by extension, giving up murder, like exterminating those that he feels have no redemption within them. Yeah, and I feel that takes away the thing that truly separates him from the rest of the Bat family. Yeah, I don't think you can make that with as much as you've done, not you, but as much as they've done with that character and the way that he interacts with with Batman and the rest of the Batman family. Suddenly taking away all that anger and pain from him and the feelings that he has towards Bruce and what Bruce did to him. um, Or didn't do for him. Or didn't do for him and the other members of the family that... Blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? Um, I, if you take away that and you take away his use of guns and the way he feels about, you know, killing criminals, uh, you're, that's, that's not right. You're, you're, that's not the character anymore. I don't, I don't think that works. So there's a couple of different things about it also. Number one, I, if it is in continuity, I don't understand how it works within the context of future state. Like, it, I mean, it, it totally goes against everything that's going on in Gotham right now where he's the main protagonist of that book. So that's completely off the rails from that. Um, now, I did talk to somebody, and he said he thinks that Urban Legends is in continuity, and he thinks something happens where it'll push him back into, into guns or something. Um, yeah, I'm not sure that how you have something happening at the same time and that big of a difference in, you know what I mean? Personality. I, in personality. I don't, I mean, you can explain a lot of things away with the multiverse, but I don't know how you explain that away. And the thing is, I think you could still get to that same point without him giving up the guns and the killing and say, hey, look. Bruce, I want to be so. I want us to be friends, but I mean, and I think that like deep down inside, like he, you know, I, that was kind of another three jokers reference. You know, there's that whole like little heartbreaking piece there at the end. Um, like I don't, he doesn't want to be the way he is. You know what I mean? Um, but he is that way, and he was made that way in his eyes through X, Y, and Z. So I think to, to kind of take away that from him is 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 erasing the character. I don't, I don't really see how that's gonna make some good move for it I don't yeah like, like i said i think it robs that character of everything sure. that makes him makes him special within the bat universe and, and, and if DC you want to take him in in that direction cool man take him in that direction let's see where it goes like i'm all for something different but i you can't so i think if you do that though he beca- he, he becomes every other robin like he becomes like oh bruce so like, i'm trying to make you oh daddy please be happy with me <laughs> well i mean we do have i mean we do have robin war coming up you know what i mean yeah. uh so maybe it'll deal with that in 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 robin war I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, I can see if it was just kind of like an anthology one-off story, and this is maybe like a what-if kind of situation. Um, but yeah, like I said, I don't see how you can have two different. You know, it, there's things happening at the same time as this. And so the reason the reason I told you that Chip Zdarsky lost my faith is because it's so fundamentally against the character. Like everything that's happened to him, all the tra- trauma that he suffered. Mm-hmm. Um, so the other cool thing is. Batgirl and and Red Hood huh? both suffered trauma at the hands of the same person, huh? and but they dealt with it differently. Very different. Um, and I think that dichotomy within the Bat universe is interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, Jason Todd is Batman's biggest failure, like outside of his his parents. Uh, no, I'm talking about his murder. His, sure, his, sure, sure. Like, okay, yeah, yeah. His 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 death. Sure, yeah. yeah. Okay, I'll give you um, that. So I feel like you're robbing a lot of the. The, the story elements. Right, which is why they, it just didn't make sense to me for that to be made canon. I, I guess, like, if it's a one-off story, like, sure. Which I'm still hoping. I'm <laughs> Fingers crossed. Uh, yeah, I, I, I just don't I don't see how this makes sense in canon whatsoever. So hopefully they fix it, cause, or, like I said, it doesn't count one of the... Yeah. I, I also feel like if they were going to make it that big of a deal, if it was going to be that big of a shift, they would have chosen another book to do it with or another story they were giving it more media attention as well yeah because you I, or, or maybe they wanted to fly under the radar and put it in with with you know what i mean in that in that issue so who knows like i said i mean maybe it'll get explained in robin wars who Oops. whichever editor approved it should be fired but <laughs> expect an angry email from from john <laughs> 
Those are your DC comics. <laughs> You're terrible. You suck. No, I, like I said, I love DC comics. I think their you books right now are, are, are really good. But. I'm going to, again, I'm going to agree with you right now. There's very few Marvel titles that I read on the regular. Yeah. Unfortunately. There's some good stuff on the horizon. But. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll turn the page on that one. We will possibly turn back to this one once we find out whether this is in canon or, or not. Please don't be in canon. Please. <laughs> And we will end on one more topic. It will be a quick one. Which title do you think people should read that uh, they aren't they aren't currently reading? Which one do you think is flying under the the radar? If you if you don't say the one I think you'll say, I'm gonna. Uh, I think the biggest one that's flying under the radar right now is uh, Black Hammer. I thought you were gonna say Barbaric. I mean, uh, Barbaric is flying way under the radar, but I want it to keep flying under the radar because like, that's the sleeper. That book is so good. But I think Black Hammer is genius. It is so, so, so good. So good. I'm going to go with the one that we said earlier, Night B- or Nail Biter. Please read Nail Biter. <laughs> please, re- please read Black Hammer. God, Black Hammer Reborn is so good. I'm always shocked by how few subscribers we have to Black Hammer. We sell a ton of the graphic novels, so it might be one of those ones that people just wait for the trade so they can read the whole, whole it, thing. It is, it is a good story to read. I mean, I've read it in, in omnibus form, um, uh, but I, I'm reading Reborn now because it's, it's the newer series. Um, but that, that story is just so good. I think Lemire in general just flies so far. On the he has radar. a couple good books coming up, Primordial he does, he and does Maze. And Maze, yeah, but I think in general that guy flies so far under the radar and does not get the hype and the attention that he deserves. So he doesn't really do much with the Big Two, and when he does stuff at the B- Big Two, he stays for like a year, maybe a year and a half, and he's like, I'm done. I told what I wanted to I mean – that guy's written so much good stuff, man, um, and his stories are incredible. He doesn't stay beyond his his welcome. He tells the story that he wants to tell. And yeah, his... that Moon Knight run was genius, genius, so, genius. Um, I think Chris is pretty much telling you anything that says Jeff Lemire on it, pick up. You yeah. will be satisfied. Yeah, and read it. Thank him later. Yeah. Um, get ready to get weird, though. Like He gets weird sometimes. <laughs> What's your favorite Jeff Lemire? Uh... That Moon Knight run. Really? Honestly, and I know it's so far re- like removed from his other stuff. Gideon but Falls. Uh, Gideon Falls was great too. Um, I love the way Gideon Falls came, like him explaining that it all came from like a drawing he made when he was young. Like that was super, super cool. Um, I just think overall, Plutona was great. Yep. If you like Stand so by Me, good. read Plutona. Yeah. I mean, Sweet Tooth. Sweet Tooth. Sweet Tooth. I hear that that's gone places. Yeah, there was maybe a show or something. <laughs> I don't know Netflix. There was some some talk of some some stuff. So, um, yeah, talk about Nailbiter, though. I feel like I just monopolized it all, just like praising so, Lemire. Nailbiter is phenomenal. Um, 16 serial killers? I think it's 16 serial killers. Something all come like that, from yeah. Buckaroo, Oregon. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the, these private investigators want to know why this town created 16, or how this town created 16 serial killers. Mm-hmm. And it's that quest to, to figure it out. And, mm-hmm. Terrible things happen. It's got like a cartoony style, but it is. A little bit, yeah. Whew, there's some terrible Crazy. things happening in that Crazy. cartoony style. It's like reading straight dogs for the first time. <laughs> like, I feel like I'm watching a Disney movie, but these are not Disney things happening. No. No. Um, so we'll turn the page. Like yeah. I said, I, I highly recommend that one. We'll turn yeah. the page, and we will end this, uh, this uh, turning the page with that. Um, we want to thank you for watching. Please remember to LCS, like, comment, and subscribe to your local comic book shop, LCS, Brands for Comics and Gaming, in Walkersville, Maryland, Frederick, Maryland, and we will see you next week. Don't forget to visit Chris at American Tattoo in Brunswick, Maryland. And buy more comics.